Anyone bold enough to make worm watching a hobby would be dazzled by the sheer diversity of annelids. Scientists have identified more than 15,000 species. Each is uniquely striking and beautiful. Equally astonishing is the way that annelids have colonized the world. Annelids have adapted to many different habitats. The mud, hard, rocky substrates, the deep sea, uh, the intertidal. Worms have mastered their habitat in many ways. In the most surprising places, wherever there seems to be a chance for life, worms have thrived. Adapting to almost every environment on Earth, worms have evolved in amazing ways. What appears to be a flower is actually the head of a worm. While the rest remains hidden below, the head blooms, filtering food from the water above. The aptly named feather duster worm has also evolved elaborate survival tools. Each of these dazzling appendages is equipped with tiny eyes for detecting danger. The annelid design is elegant in its simple efficiency. Flexible, segmented body along with a set of powerful muscles. A gut that runs from head to tail. A sophisticated nervous system. And a pulsing circulatory system. This was a creature capable of burrowing deep into the sediment. These animals may not have been the very first to break ground beneath the ocean floor, but when they did, they unquestionably mastered the art of digging. With the sun barely over the horizon, McHugh and her students arrive at a worm's paradise, the Oregon coast. Low tide in this bay exposes a vast mud flat, the ideal home for many marine worms. Oh, well, they're small there squiggles. Yeah, oh, there perfect. It is. Yes. Perfect. It'll be okay. This modest looking creature, a burrowing marine worm called Aberinicola, makes a most ordinary looking prize. Good stuff. But when they first appeared, Worms like Aberonicola marked a dramatic turning point for all animal life. They helped pioneer a new realm, a place where few other creatures had ventured. Aberonicola is like a living machine as it pushes its way into the underworld. Its body is uniquely adapted to the life of a miner. Like many of its annelid kin, Aberonicola sports frilly gills for breathing. Coordinating its sophisticated muscular system along a segmented body, it produces powerful contractions that propel it deeper into the sediment.
There's nothing momentous in the tunneling of worms until you measure their collective impact on the planet. Without worms, the Earth might be a very different place. One of the most accomplished builders in mud flats like this is a worm called Diopetra. The muddy bottom of the estuary is honeycombed with their countless homes. Now, tube-dwelling worms can be present in great abundance. You can have many thousands per meter squared that will stabilize the mud habitat itself. By doing so, tube dwellers actually provide a more permanent, stable habitat for other organisms. Diopetra's tubes act like roots to hold together sediment that would otherwise shift. The way they construct their tubes is nothing short of miraculous. Each builder secretes a glue-like compound from glands behind its head. Bound together, particles of sand, bits of shell and algae make a sturdy and deceptively simple home. From the safety of its tube, the worm reaches out to feed. Here, it devours a piece of seaweed. When the tide recedes, the worms retreat to the safety of their hardy shelters. Deep on the ocean floor, far from the sun's energy, these giant tube worms bathe in noxious chemicals that spew from underwater hot vents. Their scarlet gills are flush with blood that ferries chemicals to bacteria living inside their bodies. This unlikely partnership allows the worms to grow more than three feet in a year. Of all the worms that reside in the sea, one of the most fascinating is the terabellid. They're called spaghetti worms because they have these long, thin, white, extendable tentacles that go out over the mud surface, and these tentacles are grooved. They pick up particles in their tentacles, move the particles to the mouth, and there at the mouth, they'll sort those particles according to size. Some will be used to build up their tube. Most of them are used as food for the worm. This sea star provides a safe haven for an enterprising creature. Tucked in among the sea star's tube feet, an uninvited guest has taken up residence. This scale worm survives and flourishes by hitching a ride on the underside of the sea star and scrounging morsels from its meals. Stealing through the water, these leeches scour ponds and marshes in search of their next meal. They are the masters of stealth, hunting with bloodthirsty efficiency. Sometimes, hapless victims come to them, making for easy prey. Creeping around its victim without being detected, the leech probes for a soft, blood-rich spot to latch onto. Leeches have even developed the means to mask their ferocious bite. The bloodsuckers have an anesthetic 
that they inject into their victims that allows them to suck the blood without being noticed. That's a very effective way of feeding. This leech is equipped with three saw-like jaws that tear into flesh, enabling it to gorge itself, sometimes taking in 10 times its own body weight in blood. Given time, the once graceful leech becomes so engorged it can barely even crawl away. It can now go several months without another feeding. Earthworms can live up to seven years, and some species reach 20 feet in length. Their simple cylindrical bodies can push, pull, and slide themselves into any nook and cranny. With each powerful movement, they industriously burrow deep into the earth. Earthworms never seem to rest. If all the topsoil they have ever turned over was mounded up, it would cover Earth's land mass in a layer 300 miles deep, nearly 50 times the height of Mount Everest. The earthworms bring down this leaf debris by cycling the leaf debris through their gut. They release a lot of nutrients in that food source to other organisms in the soil. They really accelerate the whole decaying process of the leaves by processing it through their one-way gut. Annelids have contributed to the greening and blossoming of Earth, sustaining and nourishing life, forever leaving their subtle but vital mark on every facet of this magnificent planet. Thank you.